meridianholistichealth.com doing our Sundays with Giovanni series and it's New Year's Day in Santa Barbara 2017 and I'm delighted to um, interview Giovanni this time we're going to be talking about a very relevant topic for New Year's which is GUI the GUI, I call it GUI syndrome mm -hmm. probably, um, and there, there are two reasons that I'm curious about this and I want to talk to Giovanni about and that is one when I was growing up I always remember the story of this Chinese British surgeon I was telling you about, who was working in China, and he came across some villages, and there was somebody who was crazy, and they stoned this crazy person, and to clear the evil spirits out, and after that, this crazy crazy person um, became completely normal, and so this surgeon then went back to England and trained again and became a psychiatrist and specialized in. Uh, what mm. we called, you know, hungry ghosts, evil spirits growing up in Hong Kong, and you call Gui. Is that right? Yeah, interesting story. <laughs> so, so I was always fascinated by that, and I want to know more from Giovanni because it's such a um, uh, misunderstood concept in Western medicine, and yet it can help explain some very strange symptoms and syndromes that happen that once they resolve, can leave people in a state of much greater peace. Yeah. Well, first of all, as a very short uh, historical introduction to GUI, uh, it is a very, very ancient concept. And it's basically the GUI are the souls of dead persons, Sorry. which originally had no good or evil connotation. Mm -hmm. They were not evil spirits. Mm -hmm. They were just the spirit of a, a dead person. And you can see that on the Chinese character for Gui. This is the modern character for Gui, here. Yeah. Can, can you see that there? Oh. Which derives from the old card. This is the old card for Gui. And this circle with the dot in the center is the head of a dead person without a body. So oh, okay. it's the soul of a dead person. He hasn't got a body. It's just the head. Oh. And these two squiggles here, they just indicate the movement of this soul after death. It should be stressed, this has nothing to do with Buddhism. There is no reincarnation in this idea of we. Okay. Where do these souls go? <laughs> they don't say it. They just go on living after death. And that's why uh, it was a very common uh, custom in ancient China for uh, to bury objects that people might need after death. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, a dinner set. There could be a dinner set. Women could have a cosmetic set to <laughs> that they might need after death because the soul goes on living. And as I said, they don't tell us where that happens. It just happens. And it's a very ingrained belief. And horrifically, uh, in the old times, and when I say old times, I mean, before 500 BC, they could actually bury live people. Like, if you were a rich aristocratic lady, mm -hmm. they could bury your servants with, yeah. them, with you in the tomb. Would this be a thousand years ago, Yuan Dynasty, or earlier? No, or? a thousand years ago, no, before the Zhou Dynasty. So, a long time ago, 1000 BC. Yeah, 1000 BC. Okay. But even more recently than that, they say that Qin Shi Huangti, the first emperor of China, who died in 221, had all his concubines buried with him. And there were 5,000. Oh live. Live. Luckily, with the passage of time, and especially due to Confucius, Confucius was against this habit, this horrific habit, they started bearing figurines. Like you might have figurines of your lady servants in your tomb, rather than the actual, than the actual servants. Thank goodness. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yes. And that's why Qin Shi Huangti, the megalomaniac emperor, the first emperor of China, had this famous terracotta army. Uh, that's so famous. To protect yes. him after death. And, uh, okay. At least they didn't bury his whole army then. No, no. Yeah. But they did bury. They say that they did bury his concubines. 
mm. that the funeral procession went down to this tomb, but the tomb was huge, you know, like the size of a hill. Mm. And then these women felt, heard the doors being shut behind them, and they were buried alive. And I think that's the reason why the modern Chinese have not excavated this tomb. Because his tomb must be right next to the warriors, the famous Terracotta warriors. Mm -hmm. But they haven't excavated it. Well, they don't dare. I think they don't dare for two reasons. One, it would be embarrassing to open this tomb and find 5,000 skeletons of women in there. And two, I think that even modern Chinese are scared of the Gui. Mm -hmm. the, even modern Chinese are very scared of the Gui. And uh, so they are afraid to disturb his Gui. It's something very unfortunate might happen to China itself if yes. they did. That's my, only my opinion. And I, I've not read this anywhere else. But I think that's the reason they have not excavated it. Going back to the Gui, later on, from the warring states periods onwards, the Gui were the main cause of disease. You fell mm -hmm. ill because you were attacked, invaded by Gui. Mm -hmm who were restless souls, or maybe the souls of your ancestors, that you, if you did not look after their, <laughs> their tomb, yes. you yes. fell ill because of the Gui. So this man, that's why this stone is man, because he would have been invaded by Gui, yes. causing his mental illness. So yes. the invasion of Gui would be the very, very old interpretation of, uh, of mental illness. And still happening in the 1940s, because that's when he was practicing. And it's still happening. Yeah, it's that's happening interesting. Now. That's mm -hmm. interesting. That is still happening now. And the, the concept of we is very much alive in China, even though China is supposed to be communist and mm -hmm. Marxist, materialistic philosophy. They are completely scared of Gui. Uh, and I personally believe that's the origin of acupuncture, is Gui. Mm -hmm. That's again. That's only my view. And when you're pointing, uh, you're pointing at a symbol on your yeah, computer screen. Yeah, the symbol, here. The, which is yeah. this, which is this symbol here. Which is that symbol? Because in the ancient times, um, can you see that? The shamans in the ancient times, the shamans used to go from village to village, helping people to get rid of weak invasions. And how did they help you? With incantations, reciting poems, and fending the air with spears and arrows against the Gui. And my view is that there is a short step between fending the air to get rid of the Gui and piercing the body to get rid of the Gui, out of your body. So acupuncture is totally shamanistic, in my opinion. The Chinese character for acupuncture point, Shui, is a cave, a cave, a hole. And the Gui used to hide in caves. Okay, so, so interesting. I personally think that the origin of acupuncture is that from shamans getting rid of Gui. And that's why I personally think that acupuncture is totally shamanistic, which incidentally, <laughs> And that's a very controversial view. That's why you can't do clinical trials with acupuncture. Yes, exactly. How because can you? Because it's so subjective. It depends on the intention of the practitioner at that time. Yes. You can't replicate it. Okay, so if you can't replicate it, do you have, what are the signs and symptoms of somebody with GUI? If they come in... Well, there are different ways of interpreting GUI. You can interpret it literally, which I personally don't, like you're ill because you've been invaded by Gui, or you have a, an internal disharmony which makes you see Gui. And so you're, mm -hmm. you think you're invaded by Gui, but you've got that probably because you have phlegm heat mist in your shen. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I know they're both uh, legitimate interpretations, but I personally do not see the invasion of we literally, like literally invasions of we. So you I don't know that think, you do. Uh, you? Yeah. Well, well, I'm just curious. I mean, so if you've got, say, heart immune deficiency or something, you know, and I asked you about if there was, if we could show up in your tongue diagnosis book mm -hmm. in those photographs, if somebody's very deficient, then they've got to draw in something life 
and if they're susceptible, then it might be grief. Yeah? Yes, yeah, I mean, that's one way of interpreting it. Mm -hmm. But even uh, one of the ancient doctors from the Qing dynasty, Zhang Jing Yue, had a very interesting theory of according to the five elements. Mm -hmm. And he said, if you have a deficiency, let's say, of the heart, for example, right? Mm -hmm. And water overcomes fire. Mm -hmm. Water is black, the fire is red. If you have a deficiency of the heart, you see black gui. <laughs> okay. If you have a deficiency yes. of the spleen, you see green gui. Okay, yes. So yes. It's, you can interpret it both ways. So you can be literally invented by gui or you have an internal sound food disharmony which makes you see certain greens, so, even of a certain color. So if somebody is um, afflicted by gui then, would they be seeing evil spirits, hearing voices? Yeah, basically a mental illness. Mental illness. Mental illness. Mental illness. Mm -hmm. Hearing voices, yeah. nightmares, uh, hallucinations. Bipolar disease, shouting and kicking dustbins, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and and if you said that to a, a modern day psychiatrist, that this person's got a gui. Yes, they, they would they think, would think, think you, you're, you're the one with gui. You're a bit you're mad. Crazy. Yes. 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 So, have, but you know, it can be a serious condition. Of course. So how? Well, does one it's always a serious condition. Uh, yes. That type of mental illness. But uh, in my book, I have another. Which book is this? Your book on the psyche? The psyche, a very Chinese modern Chinese. interpretation of the Gui, and I stress it's only my own interpretation of the Gui uh, in connection with Jungian psychology. Mm -hmm. And you could, you could make the connection between Gui and the shadow. Mm -hmm. But I, I stress yeah. this is only my interpretation of it. And I, am a, I, I like very much Jungian philosophy and psychology. and. Uh, I think you can make that connection. And Jung understood? I mean, like, you know, we have the Shen. Yes. You remember the last time we talked about the Shen is something yes. spiritual and, yes. and supernatural and beautiful. And by what we also have the Gui. We have the Gui, which is the shadow. Yes. Which is the shadow in Jungian psychology. So does that mean that the Shen we work with enhancing the Shen to balance out the Gui? How how would you no, treat Gui? No, not balancing it out. Well, oh, you would treat the Gui through the Po and the Hun. Through the, okay. Because if you look at the characters for Po and Hun, this is the Po of the lungs, and that's the Hun of the liver, which I call corporeal soul and ethereal soul. And both of them, as you can see on the left, have the radical of Gui. I'm going to hold this up closer. So we've got the Po from the lungs. Can you see that? And the Hun. From the liver. Look at the ca characters. Okay, Giovanni. And they both have we on the left. So, and I think that's very significant. You know, we have five spiritual aspects: Shen, yes, Yi of the spleen, the Ji of the kidneys. Those three. Yes. The lungs, the Hun and the Po have Gui in it. So they have some character to do with Gui, something to do with Gui. Yes. Why is that? That's very interesting. That's the corporeal soul and the ethereal soul. So they have that nature within us, of Gui, within us, which is the same as the shadow in Jungian psychology. We all have a shadow and we actually need the shadow. Uh, would you also say and We that need the, 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 the Gui of the Po and Hun. Okay, then we, if we need it, are, are we also carrying the Gui from the ancestors? Because I know yes. growing up in Hong Kong, the yes. ancestors are really important. Yes. So, yes. do you think that that's you why looking after your ancestors' tomb is extremely important in Chinese culture? Hong Kong businessmen pay a fortune to buy a piece of land in China for their tomb, to build their tomb, which has the face south, preferably with water in front, um, which is extremely important for them because the Gui goes on living, surviving. Mm -hmm. One of the important duties of your children is to look after your tomb, especially the male ones. Okay. That's another reason why they prefer boys to girls in China. Male children, yes. Because it's the duty of the male children to look after your tomb. 
Yes, okay. And if they don't, you're in this world of the way, restless and homeless. Mm -hmm. You're a homeless we. Homeless we, and, and that can wreak damage. Yeah. Havoc. Actually. Yes. Yes. Both them and their children. Yes. So you have to keep the ancestors happy. And going back to the poem, the hun, what do the poem hun give the Shen? They give the Shen movement. And I think the Gui has something to do that with movement. That's why these two squiggles <laughs> are important. These two squiggles indicate the movement of the soul after death. And they indicate psychic movement. Mm -hmm. And what does it mean, psychic movement? Ideas, inspirations, creativity, plans, without which we're dead, we're depressed if you don't have that. You're in a state of severe depression and the Shen needs that. And he gets that from the movement of the Hun. And the Hun gets that movement because it has a Gui energy to it. There's a Gui energy in the Hun and the Po. So the gui, um, as you say, when it's it's not good, it's not bad, it's just balanced. Yeah, it's not a good It's about bad. movement. It's about the movement, movement yeah. through the generations, yeah. is it? Yes. A healthy movement through yeah. the generations. Oh, yeah, a movement that we do need. A movement that we do need, that's really important because a lot of people get very scared about gui and they get terrified about the idea of these floating spirits. But when it's in balance, as you say, it's... And it's the same as the shadow. No one wants to look at that shadow. No one wants to look at their shadow. But, but Jung says that the shadow is what makes us interesting. That's very true. Without the shadow, it would be very boring. We need our shadow. <laughs> yes. And we need to embrace our shadow. Even, yes. And we need to embrace our grief. Al although it's painful, it's unpleasant, yes. nobody wants... To. And Jung always said, every the therapy cannot even start without looking at the shadow. That's the first step is the shadow. So does that mean that in Chinese medicine for you know the acupuncturists that are watching this that we need to start with Gui? Yes, you could say that. We need to start with Po and Hun, yes, to stimulate that Gui movement. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then that can start things moving that might be frozen. And the, the lack of the movement is a major, in my opinion again, a major cause of depression. Depression is the most common psychological condition of, yeah. of, of all. Yeah. Hugely common. And uh, from a Chinese perspective, in my opinion, it comes from the lack of movement of the Hun, which comes from the lack of movement of the Gui. Yeah. So this is really important. When there is what, what we call in, in um, neuroscience, when there's deep immobilization, then there's depression mm -hmm. because nothing moves. And you're <coughs> saying there has to be movement, which is very Chinese, but it's also being proven in the West. Yeah, it's interesting you call it immobilization. I basically call it the same. It's the lack of movement yeah. of the whole that causes yeah. the depression. Because the lack of movement of the whole means lacks of, lack of uh, ideas, plans, projects, hopes, uh, yeah, creativity. Uh, yeah. Lack of that means it means you're depressed. It's depression. Yeah. So here's Giovanni researching ancient texts. Is that right? That's how you mm -hmm. read and learned about Gui. Yes. And modern science proving what the ancient Chinese have known for millennia. And if you interpret the Gui as a shadow, uh, then remember last time we were talking about the image of the pond. Yes. Uh, that head should have no Leave ripples. it alone, don't stir the mud, yes. the bottom, and the pond is clear. Yes. And that's the Shen. Yes. And the mud will be the emotions. Mm -hmm. And that image is common to Buddhism, Confucianism, and Taoism. All three of them have it. Yes. Well, it may be blasphemy, but I don't agree with it. No. <laughs> because I don't think you can make any progress if you don't go through the mud. <laughs> Yes, which is the movement. <laughs> which is the which movement. Which is what the Chinese And which is the shadow. Yes. Which is the shadow. I don't think there is any progress. We have to go through the mud. You have to go through the dark tunnel. Yes. You know, even Dante said in the Divina Commedia, that's how it starts. Yes. 
nel mezzo del cammino di nostra vita mi ritrovai per una selva oscura che la diritta vi era smarrita. Since halfway through my life I found myself in a dark wood and I had lost my way. It's classic, a midlife crisis. Classic, yes. And then the midlife crisis yes. is lost. Mm -hmm. And the dark wood is the shadow. And so that's the gui that he has to and he went to through face. it. He went through it. He had to write this huge poem. Yes. But he did. Yes. But it's a wonderful beginning, which is a fantastic psychological interpretation. I found myself in the dark wood and I'd lost my way. I mean. mm -hmm. And interesting that the liver, the hun, is connected with wood. Yeah. With wood, yes. With exactly. wood. Yeah. So I, I just remember in, um, you know, way back when I was at your college, um, 19, in the early 1980s, and um, that we did a lot with the treatment of depression, and it was all about the liver. Do you remember? I mean, before, you know, before the books were written, yes. before your tongue diagnosis book came out. And what you're doing is explaining, really, the, the character, the meaning of the character, Hun and Po, and why we need to work with the liver. Yeah, but my, uh, be careful though, the horn resides in the liver, yes. but the lack of movement of the horn can come from other organs too, yeah. not only the liver. Yeah, so you've got to liver chest stagnation is always emphasized, over emphasized as a cause of depression, mm -hmm. which it is, because when the liver chest stagnates, it doesn't move, mm -hmm. so the horn doesn't move, that's yeah. true. But other causes of not lack of motor. So Giovanni, we got cut off exactly where you were talking about the horn and the liver and you were going into the other syndrome. Yes, I was talking about the moment of the horn, which gives the Shen that ideas, inspiration, creativity, all things, plans, hopes, all things that are essential to the Shen and the lack of which basically means depression. So you want to stimulate the moment of the horn and the horn is obviously affected by liver chest stagnation. When the liver chest stagnates, it doesn't move, so it doesn't the move the horn doesn't have that movement. But liver chest stagnation is a little overemphasized in my opinion. And the movement of the horn may be lacking also from other causes, from deficiencies. For example, the kidneys are the mother of the liver. If there's a kidney deficiency, the horn doesn't move enough. Yeah. The same with heart deficiency or spleen deficiency or lung deficiency. And there is also liver chi deficiency. Nobody talks about it. Some Chinese books do. It does exist. The liver chi can be deficient. It's usually associated with liver blood deficiency in women. Okay, that makes sense. So liver blood and liver chi deficiency together imply that the movement of the womb is lacking and therefore depression. Okay, so. Um this is all very, very helpful, Giovanni. And how would we um, work with people that come in who have, uh, who are affected, afflicted by gui? Yes. Well, there are two ways of interpreting that. You could actually do points to get rid of the gui. There are many points that gui in their names. Mm -hmm. um, the famous Sun Sun Miao thirteen ghost points, ghost points gui yes. points, mm -hmm. would have that effect. So where would people find that? Is that do you have that written in your? Uh, in yeah, they're in my book. Yeah. So the famous Sun Sun Yong, Sun Sun Yao, Sun thirteen ghost points are in this book. Mm -hmm. Or you could interpret a different way. Um, um, let's start from the pattern of disharmony of the patients. Mm -hmm. So the patient. Some people say, "Oh, the patient is invaded by we." Other people would say, "Well, the patient thinks it's invaded by we because they've got phlegm heat missing the shen." Mm -hmm. The two are the same thing. They are not, you know, necessarily opposites. You know, there are two different ways of looking at the same thing. Interestingly, some of the famous doctors, for example, Sun Sun Miao and Li Shi Zhen, they use both. You know that yeah. Shi Shi Zhen is the greatest herbalist. Yes, yes. So he used Absolutely. obviously herbal medicine, mm -hmm. but they didn't think they thought nothing of using also incantations and to get rid of the gui yes. together uh, <laughs> which is typical Chinese yes. very very pragmatic yes. you know, let's give her some herbal formula but let's get rid of the gui as well 
So they would use the incantations. Would they use incense as well? And yes, aromatic yeah, of course, to... of course, and recite certain formula, mm -hmm. and uh, together with the herbal treatment. Uh, <laughs> Do you have a formula that uh, a Chinese formula that you re would recite? Do you? No. Oh no, I don't. Yeah. But there's an example. Fun. For example, Sun Simiao talks mm -hmm. about there's an eye disease called uh, sparrow disease, mm -hmm. and he says that the patient should get a long stick and go to a tree which is full of sparrows and hit the tree uh, as he re recites a certain form, a certain incantation mm -hmm. to get rid of this eye disease. The sparrow disease, <laughs> as well as just to make sure, you know, we'll give some herbal herbal formula as well to get rid of phlegm heat or whatever is okay. causing. <laughs> So you it's do whatever it takes. Is. That's the motto here. You do whatever it takes. Yeah. And I know you have a couple of really amazing Chinese formulas, herbal formulas in your, in your own. Yeah. In fact, my formula, clear the soul, which is called clear the soul, clear the soul. is a variation of Wen Dan Tang, which is actually by the famous Sun Tzu Miao. Yes. Okay. The famous Doctor Sun Tzu Miao, which is basically to resolve flame and heat from the Shen, obstructing the Shen. Mm -hmm. Because when some people have more serious mental illness than depression, such as schizophrenia or bipolar disease, it's usually the Shen is obstructed. Yes. And it's usually obstructed by phlegm. Would you say always obstructed? or? Yeah, I would say always. Yeah, I would say. Okay. Yes. And that's when you would use the clear the soul. Clear the soul, it's a, a, yes, when there's a pathology more of heart and lungs together, mm -hmm. which is very common. That's clear the soul. And then you have another and one. That is settling the soul, which also uh, resolves phlegm from the shen, but more for a liver pathology. So it depends on the tongue, the symptoms, and the pulse, mm -hmm. which one you choose. And, and you have, in your catalog, you have the pictures of the tongue. Yes, I have a manual with all the description of the remedy, the indications, the symptoms, and the tongue, and the pulse. Yeah. So yeah, that's pictures. very helpful for us right here. And then finally, before we end, how about some favorite points? I know we've got some of the 13 ghost points. in. in the Japanese favorite book. points to resolve phlegm from the Shen, to de-obstruct the Shen, uh, would be, one would be Do 19, here at the back behind Do 20. The other would be Pericardium 5. Mm -hmm. uh, these are famous points. Famous yeah. point, and the other would be stomach forty, to resolve phlegm from the shen, and uh, a ren fifteen again. Ren fifteen. So, so similar to some of the shen points we talked about yes. in the last yeah. series. And a person like that, you know, with those symptoms, I would have both acupuncture and herbs. Okay. Also, because acupuncture and herbs are different. Yes. And it's interesting if you go to China. In China, they specialize. The other two acupuncture or herbs. Yes. They don't do both as we do. Yeah. And it's very interesting to see the different personality of the acupuncturist and the herbalist. Yes. They can, the herbalists are usually very sedate, very calm, very reflective. They think very hard, and they look at the tongue, they feel the pulse, and they write the prescription down. The acupuncturists are more extrovert. More They're more the showman, aren't they? It's more showman, yes, yeah. Yes. More of a showman, and they yes. put their heels in a dramatic way. Yes. And, uh, and that's because they have different qualities. And as I said, I believe that acupuncture has a shamanistic quality to it. Mm -hmm. It relies, re relies very much on the exchange of chi between the practitioner and the patient. Yeah, that's really important. And that's, by the way, why I don't use needles with the plastic handle. Oh, yes. Plastic is insulating. You yes. don't want to insulate. You want yes. metal mm -hmm. to transmit the chi, the chi yes. or to get rid of the bad chi. So, um, before we close, any interesting stories? Do you have like, <laughs> a couple of stories you'd like to share? <laughs> interesting stories of what? Of working with a couple of people. <laughs> yeah? You, or is that... Am I what do you mean working on? Uh, um, do you have any examples of, of patients you've worked with that um, you know you've, you've worked with these herbs and these points? Oh, I mean, I don't know. You caught me by surprise. I, I did would catch have to, you. Uh, <laughs> Maybe we'll do that in the next, yeah, the next, next one. All right, yeah, good. Yeah. To be continued, and thank you so much, Giovanni. For thank you. This fantastic thank you, Susan. interview and. Um,
For more information, you will find it in Giovanni's amazing book on the Gui. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Meridian Holistic Health dot com